So let's talk about cerebrovascular accidents or those diseases. All right, blood vessels. Strokes is a big thing. So what we have is strokes. Now strokes, you would say the word strokes, but now we're going into the medical realm, we use the word cerebrovascular accident, or better known as CVA. Okay? And it's any sudden, spontaneous vascular event in the brain um, that will lead to cerebral infarct. A stroke, a heart attack is to the heart as a stroke is to the brain. All right? So a bypass, so in other words, um, atherosclerosis that can happen in a coronary artery will lead to an infarct. An atherosclerotic plaque in one of the blood vessels of the circle of willis, or something, or something coming off the circle of willis, can lead to a stroke. Okay? Um, now, one thing I want to say over here, you do need to know what each lobe, which part, and what each part of the brain does. For instance, if you have a stroke to the frontal lobe, how is that person probably going to present? If you know what the function of the frontal lobe is, then you can guess what's going to happen over here. If you have a stroke to a blood vessel that goes to the occipital lobe, then how is that person going to present? So let me ask you this. Let's use that one. If a person has an, a, a stroke to the occipital lobe of the brain, first off, you've got to say to yourself, well, what does the occipital lobe normally do? What's its function? Vision. Not just vision, it interprets vision. There's a big difference there. In other words, if I do a stroke to the occipital lobe of the brain, you can still... S Wouldn't it affect your cone? The, it's the optic nerve. If you cut the optic nerve, you can't see. You'll be blind, at least in that eye. So it's not about blindness. It's about interpreting vision. So it's, you can see. So can here's an example. No, because that's, that's eye movement, which is all cranial nerves. Isn't that like where you put the double vision and then you have that? No, that, that's the cranial nerves. Cranial nerves do eyeball movements. So if this one is looking this way and this, and this eyeball is going that way. It's general shape, but you can't figure out what it is. Sort of. Someone shows me this, and I'll show you an extreme area. Someone shows me this. I have an occipital lobe of injury. I look at this, someone says, well, what is this? It's a dog. Huh? Yeah, I see the ears right there, there's the nose. They can see this, but they don't interpret what it's supposed to be. Their occipital lobe says, this is what you're seeing, so it's putting what you're seeing to what it's supposed to be. Now, part of that also deals with memory, too, because if you've never seen what a pen is, that's not going to help you. If you don't know what a dog is, you're not going to say it's a dog, right? So part of it's memory, but it's really about interpreting vision. Now, how does that come into, into play with nursing? Okay, you see a patient and you see that there was a stroke. What I would do is say, eh, just out of curiosity, where was the stroke? The occipital lobe of the brain. Okay, I wouldn't be surprising for me to walk in there and say, hi there, Mr. Smith, how are you today? Oh, hi, Mom, because you look, you look like his mom. Or you say, um, Mr. Smith, pass me your shirt. We'll put that on. And he passes you the pants or the belt. It gets frustrating, but if you understand what the occipital lobe does, then you won't be so frustrated. You'll be actually working on the same page with him. And you could also explain to his, as a nurse, you could talk to his family, too, that he has problems he can see. He just interprets things. If it was a temporal lobe, well, that interprets sound. I hear a bell, no, the dog barking. So understanding, that's what I'm saying, understanding the basics of AMP, you've got to bring that in here. You've got to know what the lobes do for you to understand if that part of the brain gets affected. Okay? It's the fifth killer in America, all right? About half a million people a year um, have strokes. About, and this is what we call a third, a third, a third. A third of the people will die from this within two weeks. Okay? A third will be completely fine. No deficits at all. And a third will actually survive with neurological deficits. We call it a third, a third, a third. And risk factors, older age, males have it more than females, family history, diabetes, smoking, cholesterol in your blood, uh, alcohol. Uh, one other thing, heart disease, what's PV, PVD? Peripheral vascular disease, which we're going to talk about when we get into uh, blood vessels. Why do um, men and women exhibit different signs? 
We're not too sure about that. Yeah. Uh, sometimes the women don't even have any symptoms, whereas the males do. I, I, I can't put my finger on what that is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the mnemonic on there, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure why. Arms. 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 And, and time. Because you have like four minutes. You have four minutes before you do the whole thing, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but I'm not too sure. Right. All of a sudden she thinks she's got the stomach bug. Yeah, no, that happened to my arm. It's all the animal that's first thing coming. And diabetes, too, because diabetes actually, uh, not so much with, for strokes, yeah, but for heart attacks, because they don't feel pain as much. They're, uh, the sensations are diminished. Um, so there's two types of strokes, ischemic strokes and hemorrhagic, right? Ischemic, that means they're going to have less blood flow going to that area. Hemorrhagic, you burst the bubble. You burst a uh, blood vessel and blood is, is pouring out someplace. So we're going to get into that in a moment because we can break that down further. But just a stroke, also called brain attack or cerebral vascular accident, occurs when brain cells die from oxygen deprivation. Oxygen deprivation occurs if blood flow to the brain is blocked by a clot or if vessels are damaged. Without oxygen, brain cells cannot function. There are two types of stroke, hemorrhagic and ischemic. A hemorrhagic stroke occurs when a blood vessel in the brain bursts due to high blood pressure, atherosclerosis, or a congenital malformation. A burst vessel causes bleeding into the brain and decreased blood flow in the damaged vessel. Blood buildup increases pressure in the brain, damaging nerve cells and collapsing smaller vessels. The second type of stroke is ischemic stroke, which occurs when blood flow through a vessel is blocked. There are three categories of ischemic stroke, thrombotic, thromboembolic, and embolic. A thrombotic stroke occurs when flow in a blood vessel in the brain is obstructed by arterial sclerosis. A thromboembolic stroke occurs when a clot breaks off from an arteriosclerotic plaque and lodges in a downstream vessel blocking blood flow. An embolic stroke occurs when a clot travels to the brain from elsewhere in the body. Patients with atrial fibrillation or who have suffered a heart attack are at high risk of embolic stroke. This is because slow, irregular, or interrupted blood flow has a tendency to clot. Sometimes an individual will experience a transient ischemic attack, TIA, which is temporary and improves before cells die. A TIA is a precursor to a thrombotic stroke or short-term embolus. A few things over here. Here's that third, the third, the third. So again, a third will actually be covered without any deficits, a third will recover with deficits, and a third will actually die within two weeks. And that's why we got to act fast on this. Okay? A few things on this. Now we talked about paraplegia. Now let's talk about hemiparesis. Hemiparesis is muscle weakness. Paresis means weakness. Hemiparesis on one side of the body. So this, again, we're splitting the body in half, but not upper and lower, but more of left and right. So now, because someone's got hemiparesis, that could be on the left side or the right side. If we say hemiplegia, that means we're having paralysis on the left side or right side. So again, don't get mixed up with hemiparesis, or hemiplegia, and, and paraplegia. All right? They are half and half, but you need to know which. Then it gets a little bit more complicated, because you could have hemiparaplegia. And this is where you're going to have muscle paralysis on the lower half of one side. In other words, you can't move one leg. All right? So these terms, you know, when you see these in your nursing notes and stuff, when you see these pictures, you have an idea of what to expect. Right. So again, when we're dealing with hemiparesis or hemiplegia, we're talking about left and right. Okay. And these are people that had strokes. 
know who that is, right? Not because we could read it, but. Luther, right? Who's this guy? Yeah, one of the presidents. I'm not a corporate. Right? Back in the early 70s. Who's this? He's the Ryan Seacrest of yesterday. Uh, oh, um, he's, so he's, he's dead now. Yeah. Dick Clark. Dick Clark, right? He's the one that did the, does rock all the rock, rock and roll New Year's thing, right? Who's this guy? <laughs> you probably read some of his books. Great Expectations, oh, um, Tales of Two Cities, A Christmas yeah. Carol, yeah, um, Charles Dickens, yeah. yeah, all right, so he had that too. Like I know right. Right there. What I usually do is I put, and if you haven't seen already, I like to put a lot of celebrities on here. I, these are slides that I put for AMP1, believe it or not. A lot of this stuff is for my AMP1. My students usually tell me they like this because they remember, oh yeah, Luther Van, what did he have? I remember it was, it was in his PowerPoint. So they associate with us. So you see a lot of, you know, I'll put Bob Marley and other things on here that people died from or had. And I put that in there to help you to remember things. Okay? I would never ask you who, but that's what that is. Okay. All right, so let's talk. That's an easy what? Automatic yes. <laughs> so ischemic stroke, okay? So this is a blood vessel that um, the brain, or blood vessel to the brain is blocked for some reason, okay? This is 80%, this is the majority of the blood vessels, or the uh, strokes that happen in a person, okay, at least in our population. And it can be due to any of these situations here. Thrombosis, embolism, hypoperfusion, so if you have, let's say, low blood pressure, you can't get the blood up to the brain. Makes sense, right? And then we have something called a transient ischemic attack, CIA, which we'll talk about. So we can have thrombosis, um, a localized occlusion of the blood vessels, um, atherosclerosis is the most common cause of it. Uh, I know we didn't talk about it much, but uh, we'll get into it. But basically, if this is your blood vessel, and it's going to the brain, blood flow can go right through here. But if you have an atherosclerotic plaque, cholesterol, that starts building up over here, then you just created, instead of this much blood can get over there, you can only get it through this area here. So it's gotten occluded, it's gotten, and what you don't want is eventually this, if there's no treatment happen, this could actually block the whole thing, <laughs> okay? So that's what that's going on over there. You could have a hypercoagulable state, we'll get into those. And what about this one here, thrombocytosis? What does that mean? We, we talked about this before, at least part of it. You might have known it as thrombocytemia. What is Thrombocytopenia. What does penia mean? Low of low amount. So what were we, what were we talking about with thrombocyte uh, thrombocytopenia? What's a thrombocyte? You're on the right track. But what's a thrombocyte? What's another name for a thrombocyte? Platelet. All right. So in thrombocytopenia, we talked about ITP, was low levels of platelets. Well, here's the new suffix for you, cytosis. That's just the opposite. So they're going to have too much. And I want you to learn these words because you're going to see these words pop up quite often. Not so much the words, but the, the suffixes. You're going to see neutropenia, uh, right? low levels of neutrophils. So you're going to see this cytosis. So in this case, you have an increased amount of platelets, and that can cause a clot, like you said. Not so much a clot, yeah, a clot, you could say. But it starts building up over here, but it's made up of a lot of platelets, okay? You could have an embolic cause, material that came from someplace else. Uh, one that we see a lot going up to the brain is emboli from the heart, and it's due to atrial fibrillation. A lot of people call it AFib. So how does this happen? Okay. Basically, this is what, now you got to think, you wouldn't get, if you had a clot in your leg and it embolizes, it wouldn't go into your brain. It would go where? Yeah. The lung. Because if you don't understand the trajectory of getting smaller and smaller and smaller, that's where it would go. It would never go to the brain. But, if you have a blood clot that's forming in the left ventricle, it'll go into your aorta, and it can go up your carotid, that can go up here. 
So we're looking at rhombi that would be formed in the left ventricle. How would that happen? Okay. Normally your heart would go like this. Pump blood. No problem. But when someone's got atrial fibrillation, this is what happens. It fibrillates, it shakes. That's going to allow the blood to sequester there a little bit longer than this. So blood is going to be, see, blood is staying in there. So because the blood sits in there for a long amount of time, there's going to be a clot forming. Platelets are going to be rolling around in there and clumping with each other. And if it gets so big, it can shoot out. So people who have atrial fibrillation, they're going to be on some sort of blood thinner also because they want to prevent these clots from causing strokes. We'll talk about atrial fibrillation when we get into the heart, but at least you have an idea. I'm trying to mix, mix, mesh these things together. We're talking about strokes. It'll come back to you. Okay? And then you can also have, like I said, the hypoperfusion. You get hypertension, hypovolemia. If you have like low cardiac output, that means less blood going up to the brain, less oxygen. That would make sense. Right? You can also have this transient ischemic attack. We're not too sure what actually causes this, but we do know that it is some kind of vasospasm. This is what the laymen call a mini stroke. Okay? You would be calling it a TIA, transient ischemic attack. Transient because it's temporary. Ischemic because it's temporary amount of low amount of blood going to the brain. And it's due to this vasospasm. Not constriction, it kind of does this. It kind of shakes a little bit, less blood going up there. Usually, you will get 80% of the time with someone like this, they will have total resolution from it in within one hour. Okay? It's scary because it looks like a stroke. <coughs> but they have, and most of them will recover in one hour, but we give them the 24 hour notice. You are going to. We think it's a stroke or something that could be a stroke. We're going to keep you in the hospital for at least 24 hours. If you're on safe side, they might keep it 48 hours. But if you have complete resolution within 24 hours, it's a TIA. If it lasts longer than 24 hours, then we're looking into a stroke, a CVA. Okay? You should know those numbers, 24 or so. Okay? Having many of these is what we call an evolutionary stroke. One leads to another, to these many strokes or these TIAs. If you get more and more and more, it'll eventually lead to a stroke. But one is not, it's, it's scary. You get this kind of thing, you don't know what to expect. Okay? And this guy here, Frankie Muniz, right? And he's from what? Mal is he from Macklin in the middle or just the middle? Macklin in the middle, right? So he actually suffered 15 uh, or more uh, TIAs since 26 years old, in the past like five years or so. So they're watching him. He could have a stroke at that age. Yeah, that's, but we don't know what causes it. Although I do believe trauma can actually cause this too. It could, it's usually idiopathic, but trauma can cause this. He's a race car driver, so he's been on quite a few accidents. So that could be part, that could contribute to it. You know, you might just normally get them, but for him to get that many in such a short amount of time, maybe the accident, you know, the trauma actually is, is stirring up things. Okay? So we have this, so there we have the ischemic stroke, and then we have the hemorrhagic stroke. A hemorrhagic stroke is when the blood vessel bursts. That's different. Okay? And this is only 20% or more. So what causes this is we have two different causes. A subarachnoid hemorrhage, that would actually cause blood to occur in the subarachnoid space. So it mixes with the cerebral spinal fluid. It's in the same space. And we have trauma, aneurysms, or, and I'll talk about aneurysms in a moment, but you could also have arterial venous malformation. Normally, it goes from an artery to a capillary to a vein. But these congenital things are missing the capillary. And instead, you have the artery going to a vein. And in those, air, in those instances, they're very weak over there and they can burst. We don't know if you have these or not. They're, Ill, they're asymptomatic, I meaning like you have no symptoms of it until something like that happens. 
You can also have an intracerebral hemorrhage, and this isn't going into a space. It's actually a blood, a blood, uh, blood that's going into the interstitial area of the brain. All right, so it's not in space. It's actually going into the brain itself. Trauma can cause that high blood pressure, and a weakened blood vessel because of atherosclerosis can do that too. All right, so let's talk about aneurysms. Okay. An aneurysm is any localized, dilated, weakened blood vessel. So what we've got here is this. If, and I'll do this in the flag. So if this is what your normal blood vessel looks like. And the thickness of it is like this. Okay, so this is your blood vessel. And I, I'm making it extra thick here just so you can see it. It's important you see the thickness. And blood is going that way, okay? But what happens here is that there's an area that's going to be weakened for whatever reason. And it bulges, so it starts doing this. how it got really thin over there? We don't know what causes that, but it gets thin. And when it gets thin, as blood pressure is going in here, this is going to bulge out because it's thinner there. So this is just what I said. It's localized in one area. It's dilated because it's weakened. If you put more blood pressure over there, this will blow. Does that make sense? This will burst. Well, there's a, this is what we call fusiform uh, we'll get into those when we get the blood vessels. This is a fusiform aneurysm, which is shaped like this. But we can have other, um, other ones, and one that you need to see that happens in the brain is something called a berry aneurysm. Now, berry aneurysm is still going to be the same thing, but it's, it's shaped a little bit differently. It's only going to affect one side of the blood vessel, and it's kind of like saccular. It does this kind of motion. I haven't seen that. Oh, what she's asking for AAA is an aortic um, yeah. aneurysm. Yeah. Aortic, aortic artery aneurysm. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's the same. Yeah. No, we don't know. We don't know. But there is a correlation with this and polycystic, uh, polycystic kidney disease. And I'll talk about that in a moment. But what happens here is that most people have aneurysms and don't even know it. Most people have this in their brain and don't even have it's asymptomatic. But when this does burst, they usually will say it's the worst headache they've ever experienced in an entire life. Two percent of people are walking around with this; they don't even know they have it. Okay, uh, it's very common that happens in the circle of Willis. If it burst, you could imagine 30, I think this is higher, I don't know, this is the number I got, but 35% of people die when it ruptures. The reason why I think it's higher is, let's say, God forbid, someone here has a ruptured vein very aneurysm. Now, think about it. You have someone that just falls to the ground now, and that's what happens. We call 911, we have to wait for the paramedics to get here. They're not going to do anything, because there isn't anything we could possibly do. It's all surgical. So now they're going to stabilize the person, put them on the, the ambulance, and bring them to the hospital, where now they've got to bring them upstairs. Do you know how many minutes have passed already? So this is the number that I guess I'm going to be using, because this is the one that's all over there. I just don't, it doesn't comprehend, unless I'm missing something on that. All right? You've got to work fast with this. I can understand if you have a van, you're, very, you're visiting your mom in the hospital, and your very aneurysm burst in the hospital. Yeah, okay, but when is that, you know, I don't know how often that would happen. Like okay. How long? You have four minutes? It's four minutes before you get brain dead. How much comes out? Now, that would burst. Now, let me show you pictures. Oh, let me just say one other thing. 
is associated with polycystic kidney disease. We don't understand the correlation, but if someone has this incidental finding of a very aneurysm, one of the things that they're going to do as a workup is do an ultrasound of the kidney. When they have polycystic kidney disease, they, they can have a lot of cysts, which are little, um, little bags of fluid that, that are going to be all around the, the kidney and start compressing and compromising the integrity of the kidney, and the kidney won't function. So it's like well, that's what it looks like. For PCOS, they're, they're not ovulating, but you have eggs that are all trying. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. But that's what it looks like. Polycystic ovarian cancer, or ovarian syndrome. But this one, it actually comes and it shuts it down. So, and the only thing with something like this is that they need a new kidney. That's what happens. When we get into kidneys, we'll talk about that. But likewise, if they find out that someone has kidney failure and they do an ultrasound and find out that, with this, that they have this, you bet darn right they're going to do a CT scan of the head. That's what I'm talking about clinical with you. If someone has a, a berry aneurysm, what's another part of the workup they're going to have? An ultrasound of their kidneys, uh, you know, a chest x-ray, um, an EKG. Do you see what I'm saying? What would be the next thing you want to do? Just because there's correlation here. Okay? Um, so this is what it looks like. All right? Usually, the circle wells. I had a similar picture of this in my first few slides, but you have this berry aneurysm that's bulging out that is just ready to, it's a, it's a ticking bomb is what it is. I mean, look at it. This thing is going to burst. But most people don't even know they have it. And that's what's scary about that. Okay? Now, how much? Now, that's the whole thing. If it's just a small burst, meaning like if it's a small area, maybe it's just, you know, little bits coming out. I think that's how they get to 35%. But I would think that that's, that's going to be a lot of blood coming out. But I haven't seen anything like that. You know, but people, gosh, famous people, I don't know if you guys know who Laura Branigan is. Is that old? No? Yeah, yeah, Gloria, you know, yeah. So she had that, and you don't hear anything about her, but that, she died probably about a decade and a half ago. Yeah, when someone has one aneurysm, are, are they like at an increased risk to have another? Mm -hmm, they'll be looking all over, yep. Because there might be some other weaknesses that it doesn't show yet. So they're going to be checking quite often, maybe once a year or so. And do, um, with something like this, you're not going to do like a, a CAT scan of the brain. You'll do more of a um, shoot a dye into the bloodstream and see where that is. We don't, we're, we're, uh, we're